Hello everyone, it's Nady, and today we'll be testing out the Me, Myself, and Mama Mama Mitchell palette. My god, that's so weird to say. As you fabulously gorgeous people know, this is about the products and not the people behind it. Any tip you may have with them, please cast that shit away because this is a channel of positive energy, okay? Thank you. So, how the fuck is everyone today? I hope wherever you're at in the world, it is stunning. And if it's not, I hope you're at least getting some D. But, I'm extra excited about this palette. I'm so sorry it's taken me so long to review this. I've literally had this sitting on my counter for like like two weeks? Taunting me. This is a collaboration with one of my all-time favorite distributors, Beauty Bay, and it is absolutely a Jeffree Star Made Me Buy It. This is part of my Made Me Buy It series, where I test out a product that a big beauty guru absolutely adored, and I mean, I would not have known who Mitchell was had it not been for Jeffree Star, and I, for one, am very grateful that Jeffree kind of gave him a spotlight, because that kid has serious talent. Plus, have you seen him? I know it's m, -m, -m Mitchell, but I'm pretty sure it should be m, m Mitchell, because damn, daddy is like bum. Butter. Oh, he is a snack attack. So damn cute. Just sit on my face already. Anyways, let's dive into this. Oh, it did come with a card and I didn't even realize it. Okay. Oh. Okay. I know that in some countries I'm probably old enough to be his father, but oh damn, the eye likes what it likes. All right, my receipt says this was $36 and I believe it had free shipping. So 36 bucks for 32 shades of pressed pigments? That's not bad at all. This says we're introducing you to our latest and greatest collaboration yet and trust us, you're gonna wanna be a part of it. It's our labor of love and we're obsessed with the outcome. Say hello to me, myself, and Mama Mama Mitchell. Oh, there's such a sweet message on the back. I love when the creators do that. But it does say some colors contain pigments, which according to US law may not be suitable for use around the eye area. Thus, it is called a pigment palette. Most of the time, those pigments really aren't going to do anything other than stain your skin. And because they stain your skin, the US says that that's not safe. Thus, it can't be deemed an actual eyeshadow. I still use them on my eyes all the time and have yet to have any issue. Usually to limit my staining, I'll put a concealer on and then powder that and then a foundation on and then powder that and then my primer. And if I'm lucky, I can still blink through all that thickness. But because there's so many layers it makes it kind of difficult for that shadow to go through all those and reach my actual skin. It doesn't always work but sometimes it does. But this palette on Butete Bay is out of stock. Like I said it retails for $36. And out of 72 reviews it has 4.7 out of 5 stars. That shit is very impressive. I know some retailers totally take away the negative reviews but this does have negative reviews and I feel like Beauty Bay is pretty good with keeping true to their reviews. So like usual let's just read a couple of the lowest stars just to see if they have any little nuggets of information that might help us along the way. Do they let you sort it by lowest rating? Ah, bloody fuck. Okay, never mind about that because it's just showing me the highest stars and then I have to scroll through 72 reviews just to find the lower ones. It ain't that important, but on the homepage, there's a three star one and it says great pigmentation, poor packaging. I can understand that because this is so affordable. Sometimes you just have to cut back in little areas and oftentimes the packaging is where people cut back because most people would rather have a great product but shitty packaging versus great packaging and shitty product. Let's see, the five star says the colors are beautiful and the removable mirror is great. It's got a removable mirror, how fun. Purchase says a gift for my daughter, cannot wait to give it to her. Easy to blend. Okay, so it seems like for the most part, this is a pretty good palette. So here we have the packaging. Let's go ahead and open this up. Eh, all right, oh damn, she got some girth and some weight to her, honey. Oh, that's kind of fun packaging. It's a little bit like holographic. Almost like those things I used to get as a kid where like at one angle it would show some pictures and then at another angle it would show a different picture. It's very, very cool. And then the back looks just like that. And it's cruelty free and vegan. Let's open this up. Oh my God, those colors are so pretty. Let's take the little eyeshadow condom off. Ooh, despite the fact that somebody said this packaging was shit, it really isn't that bad. Like this does feel very, very nice quality. Apparently this mirror comes off. Uh, oh, that's cool. It is magnetic. Oh, I love that. Oh God, there's those other colors. Oh, I'm pretty sure I do own probably all of these colors in other palettes, but even so, this is very, very attractive. Oh, and it's a double-sided mirror. That's really cool. Very interesting. So you do kind of get like two separate palettes. Oh my God. Okay, so not the easiest thing to maneuver. I don't know that I'd really ever use this mirror. Maybe, no, I guess I would. That is kind of handy. But here we have these. Maybe that's a better view. Yes, oh, they're so pretty. Instantly, I'm creaming myself over these purples because I am a purple whore. Purple. And before we go into actual swatches, let me just feel a few of these. I'm really curious about macaroni. That seems like an interesting color. 
Ooh, beautiful pigmentation. Extremely soft. They definitely feel like a pressed pigment. Let's try this blue. Very nice. This purple. That one is very nice too. I want to feel mega because that just looks very interesting. Oh my gosh, that's awesome. It's like blue with purple flecks in it. And then let's try this pink right here. Okay, so let's put that right there. Very nice. The yellow, then the blue, purple. Oh, that purple is a little bit splotchy. And then that really pretty multi-chrome or whatever it is, it's also a little bit splotchy, I'm not gonna lie. But as we know, swatches really don't mean jack shit. For the most part, I think they look lovely. But what really matters is how they perform on a brush. Let me quick wipe these off with my makeup eraser and see if anything's stained yet. Um, a little bit with the pink. I don't know if you can really see that. Not too bad. I mean, the blue kind of, but nothing that's a deal breaker for me. So let's get right into swatching and doing a look with these little bitches, shall we? You guys know the song. Are you ready? It's swatching time. <laughs> and first up, we have Manchester Macaroni Modest Melted Mental Man Made Mixer Muffin Muse and Matte. And oh my god, I just realized all of these start with M. That's clever. But I think these swatched really, really well, especially because there's no primer. I will say that they are extremely flaky. Like a lot of them are just kind of blowing off. Like when I go like like a shit ton comes off. And so they might stick down a lot better over an actual eye primer, I'm sure they would. But just swatching, they're a little bit powdery, super pigmented still, but just weirdly flaky. Up next, we have Mr. H, Meaty Mini Morning Glory Milkshake Michelle Main Monday Mafia and Master. And these swatched pretty okay as well. These browns are a little bit splotchy, don't know why. But for the most part, they do look good. I kind of have a feeling that maybe this palette isn't really made to have good swatches. It's more made to have good quality on a brush. And really, that's all that matters. Now we have Marty Schmoky Meh Minty Marine Moody Meh. Mist and Miracle, and oh my god, Marine is fucking orgasmic. It is once again doing that little breaky party thingy. I don't know if I just applied too much, but it does not want to stick to anything. <sighs> oh god, it all just like comes off. But for the most part, everything did swatch pretty all right. Nothing spectacular. In fact, I kind of wish they had a little bit more pigment to them, especially because these are pressed pigments. But for 36 bucks, I mean, so far, I think we're doing it really damn good. The only unfortunate thing is that some of these shadows are very, very loose in the palette. I don't know that they'll come out, but that is kind of annoying. And finally, we have Morgan Miles High, Motto and Mega. And for some reason, that Motto really just swatches like pure shit. Like it is splotchy. The pigmentation is not not really that there, but the two purples, the lavender and the grape, those are really pretty. So full disclosure, it's actually been like a week since I filmed what you just saw. Totally planned on filming everything that same day, but shit just happened. And so we are here now. I'm testing out a very, very questionable foundation right now. So let's not judge that. But I'm really excited to dive into this. Oh my God. Okay, so I just opened this. I think last week I was talking about how I thought these were going to come out. And the bitches did. I have not touched this since that day. What the hell? So most of these are actually coming out on this side. Let me see if any more are going to come out. Nip that shit in the bud before it starts. Give it a light little love tap. Look at Stuff is coming the fuck out. Okay, so this one is going bye-bye. And I thought, oh, maybe these are magnetic, but these are not magnetic, and this is not magnetic either. Oh my god, okay, so that one's out. This one is out. This whole side is coming out. All of these. Oh my god, what the hell? Look at that. Okay, I do not want to pull these out because then I don't know what shade they are. I happen to have a glue stick right here because I was playing around with drag before, so I think I'm just gonna glue the backs of these. I'm assuming this one is man-made and this one is macaroni. I understand that this is a fairly affordable palette, but oh my god. Packaging is 99% of the time the cheapest part to produce, and it would not have killed them to pay the extra penny to have those properly glued in. I glued in as many as I could, but there's still some falling out. That instantly kind of turns me off. Fortunately, I have Mama M -M Mitchell's picture right here, and that helps. Even though we do have quite a few colors to pick from today, I'm kind of digging like a black smoky eye. I think we'll put some black down and then kind of smoke that out with a brighter color. So my eyes have been all primed up nicely. I'm going to take this flat concealer brush, I think that's what this is, and dip into Mafia. Oh, hold on. I couldn't tell 
why I looked so foggy. It's because there's one of those little screen protectors. There we go. Oh my God, that is a beautiful mirror. Okay, so now with this, I'm gonna place it right on the eyelid and I'm probably gonna end up cutting the crease a little bit too, at least maybe in the middle. And this is going on a wet primer and it seems to be sticking down pretty well. There's not any fallout that I can see. Just to be safe though, why don't I take some translucent setting powder and put it under my eyes to catch any fallout if there is any. Take that and really press it in right there. Make sure that my fan blows it straight into my eyeball. All right, now we can continue. I'm gonna dip back into Mafia and keep building it up. This seems to be a pretty good black. Like, I don't really have any complaints. Sometimes you can get a terrible black where it's like ashy and patchy and just shit. But this, this is very decent. We'll do the same thing to the other side. You do have to dip in and go back and forth quite a lot for it to actually be super duper black and saturated, but I don't really mind that. There we go, black as fuck. Now, I kind of feel like dipping into this green right here. I'm gonna take it on a teeny tiny little baby brush and slowly start to work it into the black right along the crease, just like that, and work it upwards. What was that noise? That was weird. It sounds like there's somebody downstairs, but it's just me and Ron. Last time I heard noise, it was my dryer, but it's not on either. Oh, well, if somebody is in here, maybe they like makeup and want to come play. All right, so that looks very cool. I don't know how well it's showing up for you, but in person, that looks awesome. Now I'm going to take another teeny tiny brush, and I think I want to dip into Manchester here, one of the ones that originally fell out. Absolutely beautiful color, but I'm going to blend those green edges out now with that. Oh, that's very pretty. This really do seem to blend into each other very, very nicely. It doesn't look like there's any patchiness, at least not yet. Quite like it. What do you think? Okay, so on this side, I kind of went a little bit too high with that green. So I'm sorry if it kind of looks uneven and a little bit fucked up because it is. And I think I want to take a little bit of Manchester with this fluffier brush. I think this is a Morphe M433 brush. And I'm just going to brush that all along the crease line back and forth. I really don't think it's registering well on camera, at least from what I can see. Kind of looks like something you'd find in a sewer, but in person, it looks so cool. And I think I kind of want to do like a little bit of a halo eye because then we could put on at least one more color. I'm not very good at halo eyes, but we will try it. I always see Raw Beauty Christy doing these and she makes it look so fucking easy and so beautiful. Girl, how? I'm pretty sure I've even watched tutorials of her doing it and I still can't get it right. Well, that is just how she's gonna be. So now I'm gonna take a little bit more of that green and I'm gonna kind of feather out these edges. Right about there. Actually, I'm also gonna take a little bit of that black too and that'll help fade it or at least kind of soften the edges up. That did an okay job. Okay, so back in with that green. I feel like now I'm just like deepening it back up again. What if we put a really bright poppin' color in the middle, like Morning Glory? Let's try that. Very daring for me. Uh, put that right there. I am probably gonna put a shimmer over this, so if it doesn't look that great, that's okay. And this one definitely does have a good bit of fallout to it. I don't know if you can see it falling underneath my eyes, but I'm very, very glad that I put that powder down. This is basically a condom for makeup. Always play safe. Okay. I don't know how I feel about that. Eh. Okay. I mean, it applies nicely. It is a little bit on the kind of chunky side. Like if I hadn't cut this, it definitely would not lay down at all. But because it does have something a little bit tacky to stick to, that is helping. Oh my God, this look is kind of turning ugly. But hopefully we can fix it up. Cause there are no ugly looks, just ugly people. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> but I feel like this just needs something and I don't know what. Maybe a makeup remover wipe? And it's not the palette's fault, it's my own fault for combining weird ass colors. Let me go over this with a shimmer, maybe that'll help. Um, let's try muffin. Oh wait, maybe we should go in with this really bright one. Yes, let's go in with Michelle. I'm taking that on a dry brush. It seems to be picking up all right. Let's place that right onto the pink. This might actually apply a little bit better with a finger. Ooh, oh God, so much better. Place that right there. Oh yeah, okay, that is definitely the way to go. And then over that, maybe some of that lighter muffin, which I am gonna apply with a brush because I don't want it to be super duper bright. Oh, I like that. Okay, let's dust this away and see what the damn 
damages. Because a bit did end up getting right there, and I'm kind of scared that it'll stain. Eh, yeah, it kind of did, but I mean, this foundation is such shit anyways that I'm really not that mad about it. I do want to go in, though, and reinforce this black along the edges a little bit more. Because when I applied the other shadows, it's almost like the black dusted away and left like an ashy residue. Okay, there we go. Definitely not a beautiful look, but we are still gonna chug the fuck on. At least we can use the shadows and see if they're any good. Even if the look ends up turning like shit, it's not really the shadow's fault, it's more mine. So to start with the lower lash, I'm gonna dip back into Morning Glory. We're gonna smoke that out all along the lash line, back and forth ever so gently. Maybe that was not a good choice because it does not look good with those colors that I put up there. Oh dear. You know what? Fuck it. Let's just go with it and see what happens. When blending the shadow out, it's not the most pigmented thing in the world. Like you do kind of have to build it up, but I'm okay with that because I have had palettes where it's like too much pigment and it actually ruins the look. And it's a lot easier to add makeup than it is to remove makeup. And so I kind of appreciate that, but it is definitely buildable. Like this is with two little layers. Oh my God, I'm starting to look like the Mad Hatter. I'm gonna take a black pencil right in the lower waterline and kind of smoke it downwards. I'm gonna take a little bit of Mafia and set that liner. And not that you'll really be able to see it, but I'm taking a little bit of that blue moody Mitch and I'm gonna press that into the lashes as well. Right about there. I'm kind of tap a little bit of it along the black as well. And then right underneath that blue, I'm gonna take a mixture of Morgan and Miles High, those two beautiful purples. Not bad. Let's actually take a little bit of that purple purple Morgan and place it along the edges of the halo. Hopefully that'll help bring everything together a bit. Ooh, that's really pretty. Okay, we are turning this look around, yay. Mm, I quite like that. I'm gonna take a little bit more muffin and re-brighten this middle part up a bit. And then to highlight the inner part of the eye, ooh, I really wanna try some marine. That might be a bit too chunky. Oh my God, it's like falling off the brush. Okay, let's go ahead and place that right here on the inner corner, yeah. Maybe. Ooh. Oh, I like that. It's a really pretty, like, green sparkly shimmer. Almost like a pressed glitter, I guess. Do think there needs to be a little bit something over that because it's not quite enough for me. So why don't we try some minty? Place that right there as well. Oh, so pretty. I like that because it kind of ties together the green that I put on the crease. Sweet shit, bitch. And I like to take a little bit of that highlight and kind of bring it on the lower lash a little bit right in the waterline. Cool. And then to help hide my false lash band, I am gonna do a little bit of a wing. I really don't know what life is without a wing. Everybody could use a good little wing in their life. I kind of wonder what this would look like if I put Mega over that wing. Let's try it. I feel like we get to a good point and then I always ruin it. This is a very weird shadow. It's almost like a putty, like I can just press into it. And some does pick up on the finger, but it's not going onto a brush very well. So we might not be able to do what I had wanted. Yeah, that isn't really doing anything. So never mind. For blush, I'm gonna go in with a very small amount of Pretty Vulgar's Make Them Blush in Prim Vixen. And then for highlighter, I kind of wanna try Muffin. I don't know if it'll fuck everything up, but it is a really, really pretty like white to pink duochrome. I know it's super powdery, like it is flying everywhere. Actually, that made a pretty decent highlighter, not too shabby. It is quite chunky though, so I'm probably gonna go in with another one over this. Maybe if one tapped it on with their finger, that would solve that issue. But by itself, it's really pretty. Just gonna take a little bit more of a different highlighter though to really make this look shine. Oh my god. All right, here we are with the final look. For lips, I ended up going in with Deck of Scarlet in the shade Trouble, and then in the center, I did Hank and Henry in the shade Liquor Liquor with a tiny bit of a Lunar Beauty's Daydream. I don't dislike this look. I mean, is it my favorite? No, my cheeks do look a little bit muddy, but that's because of the foundation that I'm wearing, so we can ignore that shit. But the eye look... I don't hate it. I think I like it. It's very Halloween-y. Any issues that I had really wasn't because of the palette. It was because of the color choices. Everything that I used blended out so fucking easily. I can already tell some of these are coming out again. Yes, look at that right there. Oh my God, you little bitch. The fuck did my glue stick go? Oh my God, these are very, very messy little hoes. Ugh, ugh. Back in there, you little makeup devil. So my final thoughts on this palette. Oh my God, there's so much fallout from this that it's like going onto the other side, just whew, 
Ooh, damn. But I do think this is actually very, very good quality. And Shadow, the packaging is total shit. I think I remember somebody in the comments saying that the packaging was shit. And when I felt it, I was like, this is actually pretty good. But now that almost all of these have fallen out, it's shitty. But I don't really care about that because that's an easy fix. The product itself... I actually really like these. They're certainly not like professional grade shadows. I know that when people see like pressed pigments, they think, oh my God, they're gonna be so fucking good, but that's not always the case. So even though this is a pressed pigment palette, it's not overly pigmented. Does that mean they're not pigmented? No, not at all. These have beautiful pigmentation on the brush. Not so much in swatches, but I noticed that when they were on the brush, they did stay pretty true to the color. Yeah, you might have to build them up a little bit, but I don't necessarily mind having to build shadows up. How much was this? I think it came out to be what 36 bucks do i think it's worth that price um i do think there's other palettes out there that you could get similar shades that probably perform a bit better but i really don't have any issues with the price that this was it's not like i'm gonna send it back or anything but i don't think this is at all a bad palette i like that it has the removable mirror i mean i don't like that the shadows are removable but like i said with a glue stick it's a really simple fix just be extra fucking careful if you have this and you open it up this holy titty shit could go flying but yes do i recommend it I don't not recommend it. Do I think it's like necessary to have? No, but I'm not at all regretting my purchase. Like if you see this, you like the way it performs, you like the color story, go grab it. I don't think you'll regret it at all. Plus you get to look at Mitchell like, oh my God. So do I recommend this? Yes. Do I think it's worth the price? for the most part. But she's pretty, she's workable, she's versatile, snaps to you, baby. So there you go. Thank you all so much for being here. I hope wherever you're at in the world, you have a wonderful rest of your day. Like always, please be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell down below so that you're notified anytime I upload a new video. Don't forget my newest collection of highlighters, including Black Ice, which does change from black to white, is available at thepoplux.com. Also, my latest album, Kiss of Fame, is available everywhere in line that music is sold. Thank you so much to everyone who's supporting them. Comment down below, let me know what you thought of this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. You can follow me on Snapchat, Instagram, and Twitter at OfficialNady, and you can follow me online at thepoplix.com. Thank you so much for watching. I love you all, and I will see you again soon. Bye.